Hello everyone, this is Alex from Switchaboo. I'm joined here by David Ridgway. He's the Minister of Investment and Trade in South Australia. How are you today, David? Yeah, I'm well, thanks Alex. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. And thank you for being on here. Pleasure. Always a pleasure. I was a bit shocked when I saw the email. I was like, he wants to speak to me? Like... I, I'm happy to talk to anybody <laughs> about good things that are happening in South Australia. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously video games are my personal interest, so good things are happening there as well. Yes, yep. Well, with the new 10% PDV rebate being extended to video games, uh, we think that's a, a game changer for South Australia, pardon the pun. <laughs> well, my first question was basically in 2018, we had the, so as a result of post-production digital and visual effects rebate, the South Australian government invested $2 million in video game development, and in 2019, another 300000 So according to the recent news, there's another 10% rebate, like you just mentioned. So can you please provide a, a little bit more of an in-depth on how that all works? and basically the history of South Australia's involvement with supporting video games? Well, look, certainly in the, the previous government did support it through the, um, the, the $2 million, and then we put another 300000 in when we came into government. But the PDV rebate, and I'm just looking for the exact words for you, it's a 10% rebate on the qualifying production expenditure in South Australia, so it's aimed at growing that sector. So, And the, the qualifying production expenditure will be available through some guidelines that have been worked up by the South Australian Film Corporation, which will administer it because they administer the same scheme for films, for video, for films. So, but, so rather than having a different government department administer, we thought we'd leave it with the Film Corporation. So those guidelines will be available in the next couple of weeks, we hope. So, um, so, that's, it'll, it's, so it's, it's all of the it's the qualifying production expenditure uh, and you get a 10% rebate on what you've spent. Which is quite significant considering yeah, how much video games can now, cost to develop. Now, exactly. Now, I'm not at, at liberty to tell you the amount of money we've set aside no, that's uh, okay. for it because it's, a, you know, it's commercial and confidence. It'll tell all the other states how much we're expecting. So we don't really want, uh, given we're the first state in the nation to do it, we don't want the other states to know exactly how much <laughs> money we're putting into it. You know, it's a pretty competitive space. We, we think we're a, a really good destination. You know, it's a great place to live, work, all those things. Um, it, it's with COVID times, we've come through it really, really well. This now, another 10% uh, advantage makes it a compelling argument for game developing companies if they want to expand to look to Adelaide to expand. So when developers go for the, for the rebate, what factors are we taking into consideration and what can they do to maximise the chance of success? Well, look, yeah. First, it starts today, the first of July, but um, and it'll anything many money rebate will be backed at it. Those details are still being worked out by the, the people at the film corporation, so it's a bit. I'm, I'm not able to give you, you know, the details of what they have to do to qualify for it. Um, it'll be very similar to the video, um, to, to video, but we don't. Those guidelines haven't been released yet. So, um, as I said, we we, thought we must get the film corporation to do it. They've got people in place to administer the, the video one, so do the games one as well. But I unfortunately can't give you the specific details because those guidelines haven't been released. So is the rebate specific and exclusive to video game developers or all kinds of digital content creators? No, no, it's video games at this stage. We, we've limited to that. And the sector, you know, we've spoken to Mighty Kingdom and Odd Games and Boxy Games and all of the others in South Australia, and they've all said this is the one thing that you know, and a lot of our growth plans, we talk to industry to say, what do you want to help grow the industry? They've all said they wanted um, the 10% PDV rebate on video games. So we've listened to industry and we're delivering what they wanted. That's fantastic. They actually reached out to the developers themselves and actually spoke to them. We had a chance to interview the lead developer behind Conan Chop Chop, which is being published by Mighty Kingdom. So have you taken any interest in any projects in particular? Well, not really, because it's a sector approach. You know, we've, mm. We have our sort of nine key sectors. Uh, creative Industries is one of those. This is a sort of, if you like, video games are a subsector of that of that um, creative industry sector. So I haven't looked at any sort of individual um, projects. Um, I met the boys from odd games years ago at a cocktail party had nothing to do with video games <laughs> and got talking to them um, and Ben Marsh and worked out that that was a pretty cool thing and he and his mates had sort of gone off and done their own thing and taken a few risks and developed a, a good little business but really um, you know this is not about individual projects this is about supporting growth in the sector uh, we're about you know economic activity growing the sector jobs and the other great thing is that the skills transferability that, that really does Nearly every one of our other sectors um, you will use skills that people learn um, in making you know, video games. So 
you know, even the thing as simple as the sort of 3D animation things you see on a real estate, uh, you know, on a, on a website to buy a house that hasn't been built, all of that stuff is actually the same skills that um, you learn uh, at video game, video game developing. So it's really not about individual projects, it's about supporting the growth of the sector and, and, and enhancement of the skills that we have in South Australia. Are you surprised at all in any way that video games have taken off the way they have? Well, not really. I mean, as you know, you know, it's bigger than video games globally, are bigger than music and video put together. Massive industry. And I'm not surprised at all in this COVID time with so many people having to stay at home. You know, it's gone gangbusters in the last few months. It is. So I'm not surprised at all that it's gone so well. And of course, it's one of the few industries where you can, can create new content. You know, to create a new movie, you've got to, you've got to go on set, you've got to get people together, you've got to get human beings together. Um, and with one not allowing the spread of COVID makes that difficult, whereas video game developers can, well, I think Mighty Kingdom, most of their people have been working from home, but they're still actually delivering, you know, creating content. So it's a, it's one of the few really COVID-resistant um, <laughs> sectors. Absolutely right. And that's I've seen that from developers, like indie developers worldwide. They've been working from home now, and I mean, they've seen little bits of delay because obviously COVID was a bit unprecedented and not really expected. And I expect the connectivity in people's homes their bandwidth, it went somebody not as good as at work, so that might be a bit slower to transfer files and all of that. But again, this gives us a chance to, you know, the combination of work from home, work from the office, um, and also you know, a bit more pressure on, on Telstra and all the telcos and <laughs> NB to make sure the connectivity is better in people's homes as well. Yeah, we, we need some kind of push there. Yeah, yep. Yeah. South Australia seems particularly forward about developing this industry in particular. Has the state looked to procure partnerships with other states in order to strengthen its approach? Oh, not really with other states. I mean, we're happy just to go alone. You know, we, <laughs> uh, we're happy to have this rebate and we want to position South Australia as a, sort of a real hub for the creative industries, but especially game development. We think that for all of the reasons we all love South Australia, you know, it's it's, it's easy city to get around, it's, it's cheaper to buy a house, it's cheaper to, to rent, It's everything is more competitive in South Australia, great place to live, great walkable city, you know, one of the top 10 most livable cities in the world, and we offer a 10% rebate. I mean, we, we actually, our economic active growth is pinned on getting more people living and working here, and having more people in the in the service sector, if you like, um, you know, I mean, ag we're a great agricultural, food, tourism state, but when you have COVID, tourism's dead, have a drought, agriculture suffers a bit. These are sort of, we really want to focus on industries that are, are not weather and COVID affected effectively, mm -hmm. and this has proven to be one. You know, I'm just really happy that we've been able to uh, you know, announce this 10% rebate. So with that, I mean, like you said, you're looking to encourage others to work in South Australia and due to the rebate. Is there any plans to support student education and education from a youth perspective? Well, we expect the universities, if, once you start getting a demand in the community for, for jobs, then the universities will actually tailor their um, training degrees, you know, vocational training, whatever it is that you need to do. Mm. Um, they'll tailor that. And a good example was uh, when the former government got Technicolor to come in under the banner of Mill Films, the universities then said, right, well, now now that we know we have an employer in town, we will put courses on so there's a pipeline of, of graduates for them. And so that's what we're hoping here, that once we start to get businesses starting to come here to grow and expand, it then provides a pipeline for local South Australian students, but also some of our international students too, who come here and study can then actually stay and, um, and have a career. So, because uh, one of our big focuses with all of these things we're, we're sort of announcing now is we really want to try and see the South Australian economy come back stronger than before. Uh, we, you know, we, we, we were doing okay before COVID. We've hit and taken hit, everybody has. We're looking at opportunities where we can sort of get a jump on the rest of the market and come back stronger than before. Obviously, this being a growing industry as well, you've taken that initiative to support that, so that should really help. Yeah, no, it, to me, it's it, it's just it's logical. And, of course, those graduates, we're talking about pipelines of graduates, they'll have the skills to go into some of the other sectors, you know, defence, engineering, mining. I mean, the sort of digital twinning capabilities that we have these days to look at a mine to see what's going to work and not have a landslide and kill the operators, digital twinning for road projects, some of the big complicated ones, you know, they can put all of that in with the skills that you learn either on the Unity or the Unreal Engines, uh, then to actually do that work, which which actually helps. Sometimes it doesn't matter how smart the, the people are, there'll be an unforeseen problem in a design, and these digital twins actually allow that to, it saves taxpayers 
hundreds of thousands, or hundreds of millions of dollars. So, so for me, it's as well. The games industry is really important. It is also the pipeline of highly trained, highly skilled graduates who go into other industries. Yeah, absolutely. I guess just more of a more of a personal question. What's your what's your personal opinion about video games, and how do you think that tells a story? Oh, look, I mean, it's a modern world. Uh, you know, I mean, I grew up as a kid on a farm. Um, you know, didn't even have TV. You went outside and lit fires and <laughs> did board stuff around the farm. Um, I, I was watching my son, who uh, is still at home. He's just turned twenty-one. He's, I'm not sure which game it is. I'll say it's COD, but it may not be. But anyway, <laughs> a, a a shooting type thing. But he's talking to his mates. Uh, playing my well, son-in-law in London, uh, he's playing against him. Like it's sort of a, you know, it's the level of skill, uh, and you know, you're not just. I mean, he's probably not doing much physical activity, but it is. It's fairly demanding from a concentration skill point of view. So you know, I'm I'm not a negative person about it at all. I'm mean, still think fresh air and sunshine is a good thing for part of your life. And, and I think, I mean, he's an adult, so it's not. A, I think there's a little tiny risk if you allow little tiny kids to be playing. You know, I think there's some sort of de- developmental things of a monkey bar and being outside and doing that stuff. Small children do, but, you know, I, don't, I think it's good um, and it's, it's, it's a new... And we have these sort of, you know, professional gaming teams now. Um, you know, football teams have games teams. You know, well, how much... What was the prize money for the, somebody that won the world championships in gaming? It was a huge amount of money. Yeah, it was a couple so, million dollars and he was like 15, 16 years old. Yeah, it's like like you've just won Wimbledon, well, you've actually won. So it's the modern way, and you should, you know, my view of everything, you just embrace it. Well, that's right. I mean, esports have gotten increasingly popular, especially internationally. They sell out stadiums, but there's yeah. obviously that push because, I mean, in America, ESPN's been holding esports competitions, and there's that pushback from those who, I guess, doesn't don't really understand it as much. No, no. And even, even we've been watching with this COVID period, you have all the AFL teams racing at Bathurst or Phillip Island or somewhere. And when you see it blow up on the news, it looks like it's real until the crash of the car does six somersaults in the air. And, <laughs> and you think, well, that's probably not when you realise it's just been digitally made. But, yeah, I mean, I, I was watching uh, Jofra Archer, the opening bowler from England, playing cricket online with... But he was, you know, one of his teammates was bowling, but he was operating the controls. And it was a, it was a television program on Fox Sports about esports and cricket so all of that stuff is sort of happening so there's mm. yeah i think it's good it's, it's a new world um yeah embrace it yeah absolutely so to go off on a different sector here so have any hardware manufacturers so specifically any you know like lenovo or pc uh companies or in tangent so the um like nintendo sony microsoft the console companies have any of them shown any interest in this rebate i mean obviously it's quite new yeah, it's early days so mm. And they would probably reach out to the department, not to me. So, um, and I sort of have a regular catch up with the department. So I'll put it on on my notes to talk to them. Um, you know, certainly, I mean, Sony, they follow their son technical support. They already have an office here in Adelaide for uh, their, for PlayStation. Mm-hmm. Which so they have those these six, they're not six, three uh, software engineers. Uh, the sort of support. So there's always some always somewhere. There's one in Germany, one in the US, one here. There's somebody always awake. Uh, and on duty, and so they sit in. So they're already here doing that work uh, that we managed to get them here last year. Um, so certainly, there's um, they, they know about it, and I'm. We've had nothing but positive feedback, but we haven't had anybody say yes, we're coming to manufacture consoles or things here. I mean, I'm not sure if you're aware, but are you aware of the game Hollow Knight? No, 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 no. So Hollow Knight is developed by a South Australian team uh, called Team Cherry. So they're. Oh, I know that team theory. I didn't know what they developed. Yeah, gotcha. So yeah, just just two guys, and they made um, they made Hollow Knight, which is internationally recognised as one of one of, if not the best indie games, and that that was made in South Australia. So have had the South Australian government or those who plan to educate have they reached out to SA developers and to gain an insider perspective on how the how it works? Absolutely, and and then Team Cherry is one of the ones that when we've gone out for consultation into this sector. We've spoken to Team Cherry, Foxy Games, Mighty Kingdom, Odd Games, and the list goes on. I think of mm-hmm. Monkey Stack, Fractal Alligator. Um, well, we've, we've gone and talked to all of them, and that's where this feedback's come back to grow the sector. Um, we give us a 10% rebate. So we, we have reached to them, out to them just purely, what do you need? We recognise it's a, it's a great sector to be in. What do we need to do to make it grow even bigger? And they've all said, 
the number one thing is the 10% rebate on video games. And I reckon the UK put one in a few years ago, and they've gone sort of gone from a few million to tens of millions of pounds, if not if not three or four hundred million dollars, million pounds that the sector's worth in the UK. And Canada has something similar too, I think. So we just see ourselves as an opportunity. We don't know where the other states will follow. You know, they may, they may not. But we've got the jump on them, and we think couple that with all the good stuff we have in South Australia, the great lifestyle, great place to live, cheaper, all the rest of it, good education. And when the, when the airport's up and running again, uh, we're really well connected um, globally and within Australia. So it's another inducement to say, hey, look at Adelaide, come here. You can have, um, you have a career, you can grow your business, and it's a bloody good place to live at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I, personally, I'd agree. I mean, I've lived there 26 years or so all my life, and... Yeah, it's it is a nice place to live. Yeah, yep. No, it is good. I mean, it it, it maybe doesn't have the you know people say oh, Melbourne and Sydney are bigger international cities. They are, but they come with their own problems of congestion, expensive living, all the rest of it. And you know, in this now more virtual world after COVID nineteen, yeah, you can actually be pretty well connected, and everything happens here. And um, I think smaller, more boutique cities are going to come into their own over the next decade because. People don't want to live in big congested cities. Now, one of the reasons I think we've managed COVID nineteen so well is that we don't live so close together in the city. We, have, most people have a backyard, most people have a bit of space, and so you know people can social distancing was not that hard here. Whereas some of those big, big cities, big populations, is bloody hard. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I mean, I always use the word quaint for South Australia. Yeah, yeah and I always say, I say we're one of the world's great regional cities, which. Because we're not a big international city, but we, we have everything a city, an international city has without without the problems, by and large. Mm. Like we, we have great sport, you know, we look at you know, cycling, footy, cricket, tennis, motorsport, food and wine, all of those, like, we, we do it as well as anywhere else in the world. And you have a beautiful thing, you know, I, I live in Mitchum, I walk to work some days, it's an hour and 20 minutes, so I'm into my office. Wow. And, it's, and, and I live in a reasonably you know, nice but modest house. I tried to walk to work in Sydney and Melbourne, you'd have to pay five or six million bucks to get a house close enough to the uh, to the city to be able to walk. <laughs> You're not wrong. Um, out of curiosity, do you have a favourite game yourself? No. I'm pretty bloody hopeless at playing game. <laughs> um, what was the... Um, what was it? Was it Mario Kart? Mario Kart. Yeah, when yep. my kids were first born, I sort of got a bit... played a bit of that, but I, I've sort of... Left that to my children to master. Haven't really bothered to. But it's interesting when you go political door knocking. Um, I mean, there's plenty of middle-aged men, mostly, that you knock on the door and they're in the middle of a game. And don't annoy me. I'm, you know, I'm busy. <laughs> Leave me alone. Which surprised me. And one of my cabinet colleagues, her husband, is a really fanatical gamer. So you know, mm-hmm. it's it's. Um, I don't have one of my own, but I, I know plenty of adults that do. Or oh, no, my son's an adult. Plenty of older people that, that enjoy games. And I think that's one of the growth areas too, is that games that are, 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 are that older people can play, um, even even in some of, the, uh, I wouldn't say nursing homes, but retirement villages to keep older people's minds active and their, their motor, fine motor control, you know, like for their hands. The hand-eye coordination has to be really good in video games. I think there's some opportunity to have some, some games that just keep older people a little bit sort of, you know, active. Well, that's right. I think they, I think they tried that with Wii Sports when it was popular back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think you're right, and I, I just think you know a lot of oldies, um, you know, they, they walk a bit, but they actually keep their brain in gear. And so I actually think there's there's opportunities. Clearly, the big growth is in the young person space, but I think as we as globally our population ages and will continue to age, I think there's some opportunities. Um, that will make gaming a bit of fun, but also just to keep their sort of brain active and you know, body, you know, their sort of fine motor control with their hands, keep that sort of bit tuned up. So I think there's some opportunities there as well. Um, well, lastly, is there anything else you'd like to mention that we haven't covered? No, I think we've covered it all. But I would like to, once we've got the guidelines, I'd be really happy to do another another sort of chat with you because that will give us, you know, it's, It'll give us a little bit more detail, but I think it'll also be good to have that for you as well. So I'm fine with it, as long as you've got enough, but um, but we will definitely come back when we've got the guidelines. Perfect. And in the meantime as well, is there like a website or anything that people can go to to learn more about this? 
Well, I assume the film corporation will have. I mean, I've got a bit of stuff, you know, I'm saying we're doing it on my sort of website and social media, but I actually think. I'll flip that through to you if you like, Alex, yeah. so you have the exact email at uh, the exact address. Perfect. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Thank you, Lucy. Yeah. We'll do that, and then we'll set up another, another chat in the, when we've got the guidelines. Beautiful. Thank you so much, David and Lucy. I really appreciate you taking the time out. Thank you very much, Alex. See you. Speak to you soon. And as a final edit, that website is safilm.com.au slash games. Thank you, everyone, for listening to this interview, and please consider supporting Switchaboo on patreon.com slash switchaboo.